Welcome back to Newsmakers. We are with mayoral candidate Jim Anderton. Many of your critics point to how many political parties you've busted through. They'll say you've had more parties than people have had lounge suites. Mm. What kind of mayor would you be? Would you be that combative politician around the council table? Well, I think if you, if you want to look at the record, you have to look at the context. I mean, I was the president of the Labour Party. I was a member for 26 years. I was on the uh, executive of the, uh, of the party and so on. I, I actually organised Norman Kirk's North Island campaign when he was first elected as leader in 1965-66. So I had a long history with Labour. And I stood in one of their heartland seats and won it for them at a time when they were on, on the back foot, really, in, in Sydenham after John Kirk and so on. So there was a long history with the Labour Party, and it would have taken a pretty earthquake, um, you know, seismic shift mm. to get me to move. And the seismic shift was Rogenomics and the privatisation of all state assets and all the rest of it. So, but in more recent history, then there were the bust-ups well, then, the well, then you go from there, and... you go from there, which I would say I was one of the last ones to leave, mm. actually. Then you go to the formation of the new Labour Party from that, so there's two. And then the new Labour Party brought in four other parties, mm. and I led those parties for five or six years. Now, some people thought I was a saint while I was doing all that, so could I work for four, with four or five parties? I did. And when I got elected um, to, to um, the, the Parliament and went into government as the Deputy Prime Minister, I sat around a Cabinet table with 16 Labour, Labour ministers and four Alliance uh, ministers at that time, mm. and persuaded the uh, uh, Cabinet ministers who were uh, you know, four to one uh, in terms of numbers if we had votes, to have a Kiwi Bank, to have four weeks paid um, uh, holidays for workers, to have a paid parental leave scheme and increased super and so on. So the sort of things, some of them Labor agreed with, some they didn't. So I had to work cooperatively and consensually to get things done. OK. Do you think you are combative, though? Well, I am about things that I feel deeply about and that... And that Can they become arrogant? Well, I don't think it's arrogance, I think it's determination. I mean, if I see people who are vulnerable getting hit around, I mean, when I saw Dave Henderson getting $17 million and the council using ratepayers' money to pay one and a quarter million dollars in interest while they lent him the money, or gave him the money, and then the poorest and most vulnerable people in council housing get a 24% wage increase mm. and cuts of one and a half million to the community organisations that glue our society together, I get pretty upset about that. Let's touch on council housing because obviously these rent hikes have hit a nerve. Um, the council, Bob Parker will say, faced a $50 million maintenance bill. Previous councils failed to front their responsibilities on that. Is he right? No, he's not. My wife was chair of the housing committee when they put up the rents. She and I had a few words about it, as a matter of fact. But it was a reasonable rent increase. It was in line with inflation and they had to maintain the level of income for the maintenance or the rest But of it. was it? Well, was it, it was. It? No, it was. I looked at the books that, that, that Bob talks about. He wanted to do everything in a hell of a hurry and get the existing people to pay all the bills. Then he said, oh, don't worry about it. The government will pay you. It's in totally incorrect. I gave him advice on this. Uh, many of those people in the council housing were getting the full accommodation allowance that they could claim. So when the rents went up, they didn't get any more accommodation allowance because they were getting the maximum, so they had to pay the rents. Bob was told all this, and he still says that they all got a great deal because they got more accommodation allowance. They didn't. Moving forward, do you expect ratepayers will help, will have to help pay some of that maintenance bill? No, I don't, because the housing account has always been able to sustain those buildings and what we need to do when and that's the existing stock and you've got to remember that Christchurch has got the second largest social housing stock in the country outside housing in New Zealand mm. but it, in my view it shouldn't be frozen in time what we now need to do is be in partnership with a wide range of agencies housing New Zealand a lot of those old state houses are reaching the use by date and they're on quarter acre sections we should be amalgamating those titles and building complexes where you've got a lot of different uh, opportunities for, for living individuals, families and all the rest of it. Then in partnership with churches and other social agencies, I'm in partnership with Nahoe Far over there to build some uh, units for w young working kids and we got a million bucks from um, the, the uh, Canterbury Trust to do it. 
And so partnerships, even with the private sector, those uh, Turners and Growers sites, the, the uh, Dave Henderson sites, there are plenty of investors and developers who want to build them. There's too many obstacles. So we can get into partnership with them. If we own the land, they can do the building, or we can do it in partnership. And I don't think there's any need for ratepayer money to be used. A couple of quick questions. Is the Ellerslie Flower Show secure under your watch? Well, it's got a contract for nine years. Um, I, I'd like to know how much they're getting paid. I reckon it's about three quarters of a million dollars a year and all the liabilities on the council and the council owned companies are paying a lot of the sponsorships and we gave them three million dollars to bring them down to the Garden City to tell us from Auckland how to run a flower show. So to say that I'm uh, well, you know, calm and, 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 um, and, and pleasant about it all it would be an understatement or an overstatement. Do, but do, ex do you accept though that it is it's a, a signature deal. event for Christchurch? Well, a, a good quality flower show is yes of course it is and the question is could we have run it with our own uh, really good well qualified event organised and the answer is of course we could and we shouldn't have been they must have seen us coming because the best offer they had apart from that was about 150,000 bucks and we gave them 3 million boy oh boy do you support the tram extension well, that's a done deal too, basically. I mean, the place is being ripped apart at the moment, so you wouldn't want to unrip it. But the idea that we're going to have light rail all over the, over the town anytime soon at the cost of a billion dollars or more is just a myth. We're not going to. Bob Parker has signed up to pursuing two hours free in all council parking buildings in the CBD. Will you match him on that? Well, the first thing to do is to keep the council buildings that they close during the weekends open uh, for nothing. You don't, it doesn't cost you any more to leave them open, and that's what they should have been been doing for years and they've been closing them and the second thing is Bob's um, you know reading my inner city policy because basically I've been talking about having free parking for people in the inner city and they do it in Auckland you, you buy a cup of coffee down in Newmarket there at the big malls and everything and you get free parking for two hours so there we are 58 inch plasmas and Sky TV in the lounges in the new building will you keep them <laughs> well for goodness sake I I'm actually going to have a good hard look at that top floor because I reckon that there's a very good chance that they've got an organisational plan which is dysfunctional in terms of having the managers of units alongside the people they're managing. Because I suspect they've got Bob and the managers right up there and they've got all the workers down here. Now actually it wouldn't be a bad idea to reverse it and have the mayor and, and, and senior managers right in the middle of the action. So we'll have a good look at that. And as for plasma TVs, I'm going to be too busy to be watching TVs no matter what the size of the screen is. I don't know whether Bob ordered them, but bad political move in my view. Do you commend Bob Parker for his hard line on boy racers? Oh yeah, so the boy racer thing and, and getting some solution, I don't think we've solved it yet. Do you support the cruising bylaw? Oh yes I do. And, and it stay? Big it will stay under you? Oh, yeah. Well, of course it will. But, but I don't know that we've sold it entirely. I mean, one of the things about young people, and some of those boy racers are not a lot young, actually, but I've been meeting with a lot of young people in Christchurch, and one of the constant things is they feel that they are out of the loop in, in any kind of decisions about how life is lived in Christchurch for them and all the rest of it. And rather than just all the time pinging young people and lining them up as, as the trouble or the problem, we've got to actually bring them in to be part of the solution. And I want to have a youth strategy which involves young people and, and feeling that they're part of the city and that they've got some decisions to make that we'll take notice of. Will you accept a council-issued credit card if you become mayor? I think uh, credit cards are the, the sort of territory you don't even want to go in. I think I'll, I'll stick with mine. That's a deal? Absolutely. We'll take a break. <laughs> Plenty to come with Jim Anderton. Do stay with us.